Yo, greetings. Um, today is 3 9 2013. Um, live from the Bat Cave. Today is not about me. This vlog is about Dynasty. You know what I'm saying? Um, a full recap of his album Working Class Hero. You know what I'm saying? Which dropped earlier this week. Um, we're going to get straight to the point, you know what I'm saying, no filtered, uncensored, this is my full recap, um, I heard the whole entire, uh, album, you know what I'm saying, and first off, I would like to say, check out his blog too, because I just watched that, check out his blog, um, he's saying a lot of good shit that a lot of people need to be listening to, and I encourage, um, I think this should be a trend for one to start doing video blogs, everybody got a camera, everybody be on Instagram, so you should get some kind of reviews of, um, this is showing full, true support, instead of just clicking the like button, you know what I'm saying, so, I'm about to break down his whole entire album right now, starting with the intro, um, the intro, you kind of gave it a Streets of Rage feel, like exactly with the same, I remember that beat, like that beat sound real similar, and, um, so I see what you was doing with that as far as if you meant to, if not, then that's what I got. As soon as the beat came on, it felt like I was going to listen to Streets of Rage again, you know what I'm saying? So it, 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 it took me back to like 2006, which is something, um, for Working Class Hero, it was kind of unexpected, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I'm, I definitely know that you made your beat. Um, but definitely what you were saying was prepping us for, uh, was prepping us for the whole entire album. The beat selection, though. Mm, I felt if I was doing it, it would have been different as far as the intro. The intro is one of the most important things to, to grasp the attention of the audience. But, um, I see what you're doing is your project, so, uh, that's what I got. As soon as the beat came on, I just felt... Like I was in Streets of Rage mode. Um, definitely. The interlude. Um, the interlude with your wife and your child and everything. You kind of get, this is what, exactly what you gave me. So based off the intro, it felt like you were taking me back to Streets of Rage. But then right after that, you kind of gave me, um, it kind of sounded like an interlude from, you know how Mr. Rogers, <laughs> Like Mr. Rogers when he does when he does the interludes and take off his shoes and sit down before he you know what I'm saying and settle in and start talking to the audience. That's how it is and they play that little piano in the back. That's exactly how it sounds, you know what I'm saying? Um it sounds real like channel eleven ish. Like it gives you a whole children's like I'm gonna watch something real educational as far as a child is concerned. Like it took me to them, them ABC programs that's about kids and kids and, and it just felt like that. Even though I heard what you were saying, you was explaining how the album is different. I think that interlude selection, I think that should have been, like you should have probably moved that down. I'm looking at your track list now. You should have moved that down towards the end of the album so people can understand what you're trying to do with that, you know what I'm saying, so that's that, um, stand for something, I like that, it's, uh, the title is very self-explanatory, I like what you're doing with that, um, A Difference, A Difference is one of my favorite songs on there, um, hands down, I definitely fuck with that a lot, I like what you're saying on that, that's track four, so good. Don't ever, 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 ever put niggas on there. Here's my advice. The song I thought was hot. You know what I'm saying? I thought the song was hot. But just knowing that I heard that verse from that old man already, it kind of was like a recycle. You went your hardest, but it felt like it was only 75% of the song based on what it was. But um, don't pick niggas on there that recycle first. If they can't give you a, a clean verse, I know how you are, you got a good heart and all that, but you need to just have some more um, dignity for your own project, you know what I'm saying, niggas will shit on you if you, if you let them, you know what I'm saying, but uh, as far as the song, it's reminiscent, it's mellow, 
You know what I'm saying? That could be a good song. I just hate that niggas had to recycle a verse. It could have been good if both of y'all had brand new shit to bring. You know what I'm saying? Like you did, but that'll just just gave you something else. Hip hop combo with uh, T Maddie. I thought that should have been a song. Um, it was. It sounded like a skit. I think it should have been a song. Like it could have. Um, you could have turned that into a song. And then had them, had you like talking, you know what I'm saying, like talk rapping back and forth to each other, like kind of like phone tap, but y'all having a combo on hip hop. So, you know, just ideas just, just came to my head. Psychological Warfare is my second favorite song on there. Uh, again, the first one was a difference. Psychological Warfare is my second favorite. That to me, it just felt like your delivery was a little bit more stronger than the other songs. Some of these songs too, Use um wait we still on it okay grown man grown man we just key nine um no disrespect to key nine but dude you need to learn how to rap because when you featured on songs it makes the whole song right like I don't even want to hear it no more you know what I'm saying um you did your thing it just I don't like key nine first I don't like I don't like it at all it just turned me the fuck off it's like Whack, you know what I'm saying? So I don't like that. Uh, Growing Pain. Growing Pain's your second verse was the hottest verse. You know what I'm saying? If you can tone up your delivery as much as you've given me or given us the, uh, the artwork or the art factor of what you're trying to do, you need to make your delivery match because some of these songs, <clears throat> your delivery is kind of off. And it do sound like you're reading on some of them. It sound like you're reading, like, um, like, Growing Pains, the second one, that's something different. Like, that's a new style that you brought as far as rapping on the beat. And that, that was very different. You know what I'm saying? Because the other ones, you sound kind of the same. In the Wild is also one of the other songs I like where you kind of toned it up. But the thing with In the Wild, your aggression, is, is your aggression sounds scripted. You know what I'm saying? So when you rap, or if you say, I was raised in the wild. See, that sounds natural. But if you say, I was raised in the wild. I was in, in the wild. It's, it just sounds like it's a little scripty. If you work on your delivery, um, I used to have that problem too. Just practice talking on the mic. If you can talk, be comfortable talking on the mic without knowing that you're recording. Because we tend to have the sense of knowing we're being recorded. And then once we get into that, we become robots. Scripty. If you can get out of that, your delivery and the bars will come out natural, you know what I'm saying? Um, who was done is he skit? I thought that was much needed because I always wanted to know what the alias meant. So that was that was a great explanation to Dynasty the Alias. Dope. Love is my third favorite track on there. I got three favorites. A difference, psychological warfare, and love is. Love is is very sweet. Um, again, it brings you to, like, it kind of gives you the, you ever watch a Disney movie, and then in the middle of the movie they just bust out singing, you know what I'm saying, to give you a lesson learned on the movie, that's exactly what love is to me. It's um, one of them interlude, intermission, right in the middle of the joint, and then it's a duet, you know what I'm saying, it's very sweet. For what it is, for what you guys represent, that's, that's definitely beautiful. I always encourage love, real love, to the masses. The only problem is, that also sounds scripted. It sounds like when you guys were talking to each other, it sounds like you was reading cue cards. Or like, it sounds like I was reading from paper. Um, I know that it's natural, but listening to y'all on the track, it sounds unbelievable. It sounds like... Y'all just did it just to do it for the album. It don't sound like y'all recorded the love. You know what I'm saying? It sound like you was like, okay, I want this to show this. And let's do it like this. It sounds too scripted. To me, it sounds scripted. Again, this is just my opinion. Niggas be like, you hating. Storm is hating. Whatever. This is just my opinion. It sounds scripted. If you, like, if you worked on the way you delivered it. And she worked on the way she was talking to you. Because I'm sure... Probably outside of the cameras or, or, or recorders, it's a natural thing, you know what I'm saying? 
it just it just to me it sounded scripted. It sounded like it was too prepared. Like, okay, we we're on, record. You know what I'm saying? It didn't sound like natural. You know how natural actor is? You can't tell that he's reading. That's how it should be. As far as this music. Um every time needs a better beat. Um I see what she was trying to do, and I see what you was trying to do. But when, when she's singing, it's not like she's really pouring her emotions out. That beat did not fit her voice whatsoever. She needs, um, I don't know if she picked the beat or you made the beat and told her to do it, but I'm sure it's some other sound that can fit with her uh, voice. And I think that needs a better beat. The why I heard that um, years ago, I thought that was nice too. Definitely the why. In the Wild Remix, very creative to remix one of them songs, which is dope. I like it. Everybody on that song went hard. I like that, too. Um, there's a lot of songs on there that I heard earlier today that I thought should have been a part of this. So, overall, Working Class Hero, it sounds... It's like... It's very personal, and I understand what you're trying to do for this unrelatable to the average person, like a person that doesn't have a job and they're struggling and trying to look for answers, cannot relate to this. They can't feel that they're a working class hero. Like the original John Lennon working class hero was appealing to the whole masses. You know what I'm saying? You made working class hero very personal, like you are the working class hero but within your home. And that's what it sounds like which is nothing wrong. It just sounds like a big book of uh, poems. Um, a big book of poems with one title based on uh, what, you, what you're going through right now. Not whack, you know what I'm saying? It just, it's just a little too personal. So it's kind of like I found, your, I found your poetry book and I opened it and I started reading it. I'm like, what is this shit? You know what I'm saying? I understand love is. I've been, I've been in love before. But it's just some of these things here, <clears throat> it just sounds a little too personal, it's too, nah, I'm not going to say soft, it's too Disney, you know what I'm saying, like, you know how Disney movies always end up with that one lovable lesson, and it's always singing in the middle of the song, and it just sounds like that, it's, it's very um, child ready, you know what I'm saying, it shouldn't have a parental advisory content sticker on it, um, it's good for, for what you represent now as a man <clears throat> and if that's what you want to leave your family and your daughter into, perfect man, perfect. Before, for the hood, for, just for the average listener, I would say this is a personal, 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 for you album, you know what I'm saying? It's definitely for you. It's like one of them diaries that you keep by yourself, you know what I'm saying? It's very deep, um, very deep and very about you and yours. So it's hard to relate to. Um, it's, it's very hard to relate to because everything is dealing with you. I've been there before. I've been there personally, but it's a lot of people who have not been down this road of uh, being a working class hero, being a father, being uh, in love and sharing songs with them. You know what I'm saying? It's very old school and it's very, um, it, it does have a time stamp on it. it. It doesn't sound like anything of 2013. Um, but, again, it's not whack. I definitely like your art. I like what you did with it. Uh, but it's very personal. You know what I'm saying? It, it, tells you, it tells you a lot about you and what you're going through right now. You know what I'm saying? Compared to your old work, it definitely is uh, a mature. You sound very mature on this. It's, it's like a Cosby show. You know what I'm saying? It's like watching the Cosby. If I have um, good times in the Cosby, this will be the Cosby. You know what I'm saying? The good times is in the projects. The Cosby is, is, is more upscale. So this is more upscale. Only certain people can relate to the Cosby. You see what I'm saying? So, it's not a diss. It's just a little bit upscale, more personal, more mature. So, definitely, um, I recommend people that want to listen to hip-hop in this type of fashion. As far as um, 
upscale and influential dealing with a man that is settling down and having a family and just want to stick to that, I recommend that to them. You know what I'm saying? And all y'all Dynasty fans out there, all his supporters and people that claim and say that they support him, y'all need to start talking and letting this man know because um, I'm the only one doing this right now. So y'all need to let him know. Let him know what this sound like. Let him know what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, we not we 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 gonna keep making music. So if you claim you support, motherfuckers, do it.